Zayn says, can we make tawaf on behalf of chronically ill parents or deceased people? The sunnah tells us that it is permissible to make hajj or tawaf al-badal, meaning this is on behalf of people. So a person who had died, one of my parents, one of my ancestors, one of my uncles, one of my friends, and I'd like to attribute a umrah for his sake so that Allah would elevate his status and erase some of his sins. I say, لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ umrah, and I go. No problem in that. I'd like to perform hajj. لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ hajj on behalf of so-and-so, and I go. No problem in that. Tawaf is a form of ibadah, like fasting, it's like praying, in order to accredit the reward to a deceased, I have to have an evidence from the Quran and Sunnah saying that this is permissible. And because I don't have this, scholars say that performing tawaf on behalf of a deceased person or chronically ill or someone who's healthy is totally prohibited because it is not mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. So, Shaykh, can't we cascade the permission to perform Umrah and Hajj on behalf of a deceased? Also to tawaf, the answer is no, because tawaf was there at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and he never directed people to do it on behalf of others. Likewise, reciting the Quran, can we recite the Quran on behalf of deceased and give them the reward? The answer is no. Quran was there and the Prophet had never told the people to recite Quran for their deceased or when they visit a graveyard. This is one of the big innovations in the Muslim world. They go to the graveyard and they raise their hands and recite Al-Fatiha. We are at a gathering and they say, Allahu Akbar. Last year, our brother Abdullah used to pray Taraweeh with us in the masjid. Now he's dead. Al-Fatiha, oh people. And everybody starts to say, what are you doing? So reciting the Fatiha. It's the most important and the greatest surah in the Quran. Say, I know that. But why are you doing it for the deceased? So you have to give him barakah, give him reward. Do you have any evidence from the Quran or Sunnah? The answer is no. Then this is an innovation. And likewise, when people get married, so we go and propose to this girl's family and say we would like to uh, um, give our uh, uh, son to your daughter, your daughter to our son, and it would be a blessing. And they said, we accept, inshallah, let's recite the Fatiha. Why are you reciting the Fatiha? She said, for barakah. Barakah, are you thinking that he's dying like the one in the grave? That's why we recite Fatiha uh, uh, at the graveyard and we recite Fatiha when a person is getting married. What is this? All of this is an innovation. Reciting Surah Yasin and giving it to the deceased is an innovation. Shaykh, reciting Quran. Yeah, I know reciting Quran. It's a good deed for yourself. You're getting reward, but you cannot simply sign it off to someone else. Accredit it to someone else. This is not for you. It, you cannot simply pray six rak'ahs and say, okay, I'll take two rak'ahs and four rak'ahs. I'll waver that to my deceased uh, father or mother. This is not part of the sunnah at all.